What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about artificial sweeteners. But first, you know the drill, like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study came out in Nutrients. This study was using NHANES data. Now NHANES data is data from the US population that started collection in 1988 and has gone all the way till 2018 and they do some pretty detailed dietary recalls amongst a pretty broad population. What they were looking for in this study was across three different tertiles of artificial sweetener intake, did they see any differences in cancer risk as they assessed via cancer mortality? So basically, how at risk were you to die of cancer? And what they found was that artificial sweeteners had absolutely no association with cancer risk as expressed as cancer mortality. Now that's kind of jumping to the end, but let's talk about a little bit more data that they found that might explain why we see some of these associations with cancer in some of these other studies. Like for example, the Nutrisanta study out of Europe. I think one of the things to really keep in mind here is they did show that people who consume artificial sweeteners are more likely to be obese, they have a higher BMI. That may look like, oh, artificial sweeteners are causing people to become obese and you know, if people are more obese, that may contribute to cancer risk. One of the things to keep in mind is whenever you're looking at association data or epidemiology is there can always be the case of reverse causality. Instead of artificial sweeteners are causing people to become obese or overweight, it could be that people who are overweight or obese are simply more likely to consume these substances. And in fact, they did an assessment where they looked at people who had intention to diet or who were undergoing fat loss phases amongst this cohort. And what they found were that people who were using artificial sweeteners were also much more likely to be actively engaging in weight loss. So it's very likely that this is a case of reverse causality where people who are more likely to try to lose weight are eating greater amounts of artificial sweeteners. People who are overweight or obese consume more of these things because they're trying to lose weight not because those things made them overweight or obese. If we look at the actual human randomized control trials where they give artificial sweeteners in the form of diet drinks, etc., we either see no effect on body weight or a significant reduction in body weight. In fact, there was a recent network meta-analysis that compared substituting sugar sweetened beverages with artificially sweetened beverages or substituting sugar sweetened beverages with water. What they found was that substituting sugar sweetened beverages with artificially sweetened beverages led to a reduction in energy intake and actually significant weight loss. What was interesting was substitution of those same sugar sweetened beverages with water did not lead to weight loss. And when they compared artificially sweetened beverages to water head to head, artificially sweetened beverages actually outperformed water for weight loss and I think a reduction in blood pressure as well. Am I saying that diet sodas or artificially sweetened beverages have some magical fat burning effect? No, I'm not. Of course they don't. They simply may cause people to consume less energy. So what might be likely is people who are likely to pick sugar sweetened beverages also have more of a sweet tooth and if they don't get it from those sugar sweetened beverages, they will fill that void elsewhere which may be why substituting with water does not lead to a reduction in energy intake with those people. So for those people, substituting artificially sweetened beverages may be a great strategy to help them reduce their energy intake, but still fulfilling that sweet tooth. There are all kinds of people who will just say, well, it's not better than water, it's not better than water. Well, by the data, it's at least as good and maybe better. But if you don't like consuming artificially sweetened beverages, if you don't like the way they taste, that's fine. You don't have to. I'm not encouraging their consumption. You certainly don't need to take them in. They might only be better insofar as if you have a sweet tooth, it helps fill that, whereas water might not. But if you like water just fine, water is perfectly fine to consume. But based on the latest, most highly controlled studies, there does not seem to be negative health effects from artificially sweetened beverages that we can point to. And that includes the data on the gut microbiome, which I have addressed multiple times. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. If you like these breakdowns on studies, make sure you check out my research review reps. Every month we break down five studies in exercise and nutrition and make them super easy to understand and very palatable, put it in layperson's terms and give you the information you need to know. Click the link in the description to sign up and I'll catch you guys next week.